Hello and welcome to the 27th video in this series programming Simple Flappy Robin for Android using Cocos 2DX. So last video then, um, I spoke about right at the end of the video this problem where if you now press the screen continuously the Robin just keeps going up and up and up and up and we'll get over the actual tube images. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to deal with that, change some of the constants to improve the gameplay but not do everything because I'd like to split it over a couple of videos because um, there's a, a little complicated bit to it but um, anyway without without further ado let's go into the Robin so the way we're going to do this is sort of a bit of a brutal hack really um, inside the Robin class I'm just going to add in a new float and call this top um, of screen and then let's make a new uh, function called here public one called set params and this will take a float which is the top of the screen and you can probably already imagine what's going to happen here we're going to simply tell it from when we create inside the hello world layer what the top of the screen is so i'm going to go to hello world scene.cpp now and just down inside the initialization function wherever it is it's here we've got our robin here and i'm just going to say robin and set and then params has that appeared yet yes it has and then we'll say visible size dot height so we've sent the robin our height if we go back then into the h file for the robin and then the implementation file here i'm just going to quickly write out the function so we need also to tell it that this belongs to our robin and then i'll simply say that top of screen equals tos so the question is what we're going to do with this then well, I've already got the code added into the Robin file here um, as a little bit of preparation, or to be brutally honest, I forgot to remove it when I decided to do this video again because the last one got too long. Um, but basically what we're adding into the update Robin is you, it, the function was left at this where we set the new speed in this way if the Robin was moving. However, what we want to say is if the Robin's position is now greater than the top of the screen and remember that the robin's position point is in the middle of it so this will look like the top half of the robin has gone off the top of the screen then we'll set the position to the top of the screen so the robin can't go any further up but also the robin will be traveling upwards upwards at this at the, when it hits this point with a certain speed which means if you don't touch the robin it will sort of have this effect of sticking to the top of the screen briefly so let's also set the current speed straight away to zero so he starts falling as soon as he reaches the top of the screen unless of course you touch him again in which he'll stay more or less stuck to the top of the screen but the point is you can't now keep going indefinitely upwards and over the tubes and also falls instantly if you tap him and he hits the top of the screen and i'll start falling instantly downwards so that's that bit done then for the robin and what we need to do is go into constants.h and here I made a right old mess of the speeds going across the screen and you've probably noticed yourselves uh, during the programming of the video that I made a right old mess of the speeds going across the screen and I've actually I'm going to I've made the changes already and I'm going to talk through those changes now rather than change them by hand because that takes a little bit too long but essentially the big mess was inside here so I had the speeds in seconds then scaled by the X which effectively meant that depending on the X scale then the, the, the travel speed across the screen should be theoretically the same but of course that's just utter rubbish because the screen size also depends on the number of pixels going across the screen and uh, and, and also the aspect ratio and, and the result basically was to cut a long story short um, depending on the resolution density on the device the tubes are either very very slow or very very fast and in fact some, on some very high resolutions they were so slow that they completely overlapped each other even with a two seconds gap so I was scratching my head for a while then realized I'd been really silly and I needed to actually put the speeds in pixels per second straight off which these are now these numbers and then scale them according to the Y, of course, because all of our images, the robin and the tubes, the important part of the game, are scaled according to the Y. The X doesn't matter, so long as the relationship of the number of pixels they go across the screen per second is the same according to how big everything is in the Y direction, then the, the speed is the same, and obviously the, the gaps and everything are the same. And I then tested this with my sheet of sort of per aspect ratio around 
eight different resolutions and timed everything and made sure that exact, irrespective of aspect ratio and resolution, the speeds were the same and they indeed were. So I'd recommend really you just paste in these new constants uh, into the constants file you've got already. So this was the first change there. The next change then was the spawn time for the tube which I have now at 2.3 and a much smaller variance of 8 so that we constantly get tubes appearing and there aren't any large gaps between the tube. The next change I made was I fine-tuned some of these gaps here um, just so that the gaps were a little bit more sensible and I also changed the gravity, made the gravity quite a bit bigger so that the robin falls much quicker down towards the floor. So those were some of the major sort of gameplay affecting changes inside there and what we need to do just to finish off this video is inside tube.ctube.cpp obviously now we can just set that the speed is uh, the pixels per second like so and also we need to do the same for the clouds so you need to knock off this screen width division here because we don't need that anymore but everything else stays the same and in fact although it's a fairly major change because of the way it's been programmed using the constants like this we actually don't really need to change much code and indeed in the initialization code for all of these clouds and things we don't need to actually change anything inside here it's all set up by the constants so the, the next thing that needs to be done but we'll do in the next video sort of the final bit of the gameplay is now that we've got the speeds done correctly and the gaps a little bit better and I'm going to show it shortly running on the application the robin touches are working correctly there's one more or two more little things which we'll do in the next video and that is at the moment we could have a tube that goes from top to bottom we could have five of those in a row well I don't want to have a repeated tube sort of type upper lower or pair so if we've we want some way of preventing that happening. It always has to be a change so that the robin really does have to go up and down all of the time. And the other thing we want to make sure is that if the robin has had to go under a tube, so an upper type tube, um, and it's followed then by a lower type, which means it has to go over it, we have to make sure that it's possible for the robin to get upwards quick enough if the gap is small, so the 2.3 second gap. Otherwise the game obviously is unplayable if you ever get the situation. And this is something that's already in the released version on the Play Store and we'll look at implementing that also in the next video. So what I'm going to do now then is fade the video out and create the application as normal. So here then is the application started and hopefully if I press the screen anywhere the robin will jump and now we'll see the tubes coming in at a much more sort of, there you go, regular interval and things looking a little bit better anyway and slightly more um, let's say realistic and like a normal game. One thing I will add is I've actually changed also the size of the tubes and I'll put in the download package uh, along with the code that's been altered the new tube images as well so that you can see those but you can see from the, the layout on the screen already here things are much closer together and the speed itself also looks uh, a lot more reasonable for a relatively interesting game. Okay then, so that's it for this video and the next one will finish off this sort of gameplay thing with sorting out the maximum gap that the robin has to get over and also the order that the tubes appear. So thanks very much for watching and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.